from the side, its large head looked like a crocodile's, big eyes made for sharp vision. With its streamlined body and powerful flippers, the Pliosaur was a virtual torpedo, cruising and maneuvering underwater at speeds up to 35 miles an hour. 130 million years ago, in the early Cretaceous period, Pliosaurs grew to incredible size. The largest was the Chronosaur. This frightening species found in Australia was 50 feet long. Its head was 12 feet. Its jaws were large enough to engulf a cow. While the wide-mouthed Pliosaurs grew bigger, the long-necked Plesiosaurs grew longer. At 60 feet, the largest was Elasmosaurus. Its 40-foot neck was a cunning new weapon. Like a snake, it could strike out and ambush a hapless fish. Unlike ichthyosaurs that had lost the ability to leave the oceans, plesiosaurs may have spent part of the time on land. Their bone structure suggests that they were amphibious. Their anatomy was similar to that of modern sea turtles. They had a wide, broad body over a bony, armored stomach region. With their strong hind legs, they may have crawled onto land to lay their eggs. This ability to escape to land for short periods may have been their only defense against another monster, for an even more deadly foe lurked in the sea 130 million years ago. This skull belonged to Mosasaurus maximus. The Mosasaurus was more than a match for the Plesiosaurus. If there was ever a dragon, this was it. From head to tail, it was 40 feet of sinew and brawn. The culmination of millions of years of adaptation gave the Mosasaurs a dreadnought design. This was not just survival of the fittest, this was survival of the deadliest. Evolutionary pressures created a monster design for speed and killing.